Hey guys, it's Maggie again, and I am here today with a video that I promised you in my hospitalized for sepsis video. So we are going to talk all about sepsis, severe sepsis, and septic shock, because those are kind of the three <laughs> categories of sepsis. We're going to go into details, what the difference is between all of them, and then of course I'll integrate a little bit of what happened to me a couple weeks ago. I am hoping that this is very informative for you. I did a lot of research. Um, I used some of my nursing knowledge. I remember going to a sepsis class where I used to work and it was so interesting but it's also extremely scary because sepsis is insidious. It sneaks in, you don't really know it's happening until it's real bad. So we're going to talk about some of the warning signs, what to look out for, and how they figure out you have sepsis, and how they treat it, and the long-term effects uh, that sepsis can have on you. In another video, I'll talk a little bit about how I am recovering from the whole severe sepsis episode that I had a few weeks ago, so look out for that. Alright, so let's get into it. So, sepsis is crazy. Uh, <laughs> that's just how I'm looking at it. Um, but it is your body's absolutely extreme severe reaction to an infection. The body releases all these chemicals normally when an infection is present in the body. These help to fight the infection, but it triggers this inflammatory response. And that's why you get all of these crazy symptoms that we'll talk about. Unfortunately, sepsis can be life-threatening, like I mentioned in the video where I talk about my own uh, experience just a few weeks ago. Um, on my hospital unit, we did lose a patient because we didn't know that they were septic. This was actually before I started working there, but they used it to educate us. You know, they showed us what the warning signs were that were just missed because they're not necessarily uh, symptoms that, you know, oh my god, you're feeling this way or you're having this happen to you. They're just very quietly like sneaking in. If a person survives sepsis, uh, there can be some long-term effects like organ failure, so that's why it is so important to know when it's coming. Like most things, most diseases <laughs> that happen, um, it affects mainly those at risk, so people who are older in age, young children, young babies, uh, pregnant women, people who are immunocompromised, and those that of course are on immunosuppressants, which would make you immunocompromised, and people who are chronically ill, so also me. The symptoms of it can truly make you feel like you've been hit by a truck. That's what I felt like. I felt like I was hit by an 18-wheeler, and I kind of ignored the early on symptoms till I felt really, really, really bad. So some of the symptoms include things like tachycardia, which is just a high heart rate. Um, it doesn't even need to be that high. It can just be, you know, 20, 30 beats more than your usual, and um, unfortunately that was one of the things that I ignored. My heart rate, generally, if I'm resting, you know, sitting on the couch, I run about 60 to 70, and when I started to get sick and I started to have fevers, which is another symptom of it, I was in the 130s. So that was something that I ignored. Um, I thought that because I was febrile, you know, this heart rate, this increased heart rate kind of goes along with that. Um, and I just swept it under the rug. Like I said, you can also have fevers. They don't even need to be incredibly high. And you could also have uh, low temperatures as well. So we will talk a little bit more about exactly what those numbers look like. Um, my fever though was fairly high at 103 degrees Fahrenheit. You can have shivers, which is absolutely what I had. I was shaking, I kept breaking my fever, um, sweating like crazy, and then getting another fever. You can be breathless or, you know, short of breath, just like, <sighs> oh my god. <laughs> And you can have pain, which is, you know, it could be either localized where the infection is. So I was having pain. Um, it felt like right behind my ostomy or my stoma 
and it was shooting backwards. So when you get a kidney infection, um, one of the tests that they do to see if you're having pain is they will just gently hit your back on either side where your kidneys are and uh, that hurt. <laughs> you might also have some generalized pain which was one of the first symptoms along with that localized pain. Uh, I started getting joint pain everywhere. It just hurt to move around um, and I told Zach that. I was like this is so weird like why am I hurting everywhere? And that's what clued me off to take my temperature. Another really common thing that can happen, and this um, was discovered in me at the hospital, is that you can have hypotension, which is just low blood pressure. I was running um, 70s over, I think, 40s, which is pretty low for me. Uh, I do run low anyway, but it's usually like 100 over 60. Um, so I did get quite a bit of fluid to try and help boost up my blood pressure um, because has more fluid in your veins causes more pressure. And then one of the scary things that can happen is kind of confusion and just being really out of it. Luckily I stayed pretty lucid but um, it is something to look out for and it's definitely one of the later stages of sepsis. So let's define sepsis, uh, severe sepsis, and septic shock. So you know kind of the levels and um, you know what the differences are between all three. Now I've got a paper here and I'm going to read off of it just because there are a lot of numbers uh, that deal with sepsis in general and I want to make sure that I tell you them right. Sepsis is defined as having two of the following or more. So your temperature can be elevated or it can be lower. So with the elevated temperature they describe it as 38 degrees Celsius or higher um, which equates to about 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit and then for the low temperature you being that temperature or lower is 36 degrees Celsius or that equals about 96.8 degrees Fahrenheit. So you want to look out for that either high temperature or low temperature but you can tell that they're not totally you know off the grid like that is a fever that is a low temperature but they're not crazy high it doesn't take a whole lot the symptoms of sepsis are totally insidious like I said heart rate that tachycardia is defined as having a heart rate higher than 90 beats per minute a lot of people their resting rate is around 60 70s the 90 beats per minute really isn't too far off like I said that's only 20 beats your respiratory rate can also be increased because of that breathlessness that you're having and that's defined as breathing or having a breath greater than 20 times per minute. And then your white blood cell count, which is not always a great indicator of an infection um, because a white blood cell count can be elevated for other reasons, but the definition of sepsis defines that as being greater than 12,000 for your white blood cell count or lower than 4,000. Or, just to make things really confusing for you, having greater than 10% of immature forms of white blood cells. So having two or more of the signs that I just said uh, is a definition of just sepsis, just that beginning that base level of sepsis. Now severe sepsis, that is what I had. I was, you know, just really trying to be uh, the winner and going for the best. Um, I didn't quite get to the top level of septic shock, thank God, but I did get to the mid-level there of severe sepsis and that just means that your organs are being affected. There's some sort of organ dysfunction, whether it be hypoperfusion, just you know, not enough blood flow, um, or hypotension. So my kidney was affected. Um, when they did my blood work, they saw that my filtration rate for my kidneys was not as great. Basically that meant that I was in acute kidney failure. Luckily it did not take long for that to resolve. It was resolved within I think just a couple days. So that was pretty great. For others though where this becomes more severe, um, there can be lasting damage on the organ that's affected. Now for septic shock, this is very scary. Um, people wind up in the intensive care unit when this happens. Uh, it's definitely, it definitely affects you. This is when there is persistent um, hypoperfusion or lack of blood flow and hypotension. So that means that a patient needs to be resuscitated, not like how you're thinking like CPR, 
but resuscitated with fluids to get their blood pressure back up. Sometimes they even need medications to keep their blood pressure up, like um, epinephrine. So it takes some constant monitoring of that patient to make sure that their blood pressure isn't dropping too low, and that is like the last level. So that's why I wanted to mention all the symptoms, the signs and symptoms of sepsis. So it's caught earlier if you think that you're having that issue. A lot of people that watch this channel do have a chronic illness. They are immunocompromised because um, they may have an autoimmune disease that requires immunosuppressant drugs. So um, we are at risk for sepsis. A lot of people actually when I posted on Instagram saying like, hey, I'm in the hospital for this kidney infection and apparently I'm septic. A lot of people are like, oh my god, I've had that happen too. So hopefully this helps you catch it. I'm hoping. <laughs> the thing about sepsis is, is that it needs to be treated ASAP. Like, you need to get on top of the sepsis right away. You need to go to the hospital because it usually requires IV antibiotics. They usually don't treat orally. <laughs> they start with IV because it gets it to you quicker, it's a little bit more um, reliable, a little bit more effective, and a lot of hospitals have guidelines on how quickly uh, the patient should be on their first antibiotic from the time that they walked through the emergency room doors. I believe that at my hospital job, I can't remember, but I think it was an hour, um, which is why I was like, oh my god, they waited four hours to give me my first antibiotic, which blows my mind because they knew that there was some crazy infection going on with uh, everything going on. Like I said, a lot of people will be hypotensive or have low blood pressure, so they'll start fluids on you too. Um, you might even be dehydrated. When I was home, I was throwing up. I threw up quite a bit everywhere, everywhere on our coffee table. Um, don't worry, we cleaned it. <laughs> but I couldn't keep anything down, so I got dehydrated very, very quickly. Um, my ostomy output basically turned to water because I wasn't eating anything to keep everything uh, nice and full consistency. They gave me that fluid as well just to rehydrate me. The fluids also help regulate lactic acid levels in the blood. Um, this is something that was elevated in me, so they gave me fluids to help lower that. Um, my lactic acid level was high. And I tried to do as much research and I tried to understand why lactic acid levels increase. And the only thing that I could find, although there was a lot of conflicting information about this, is that lactic acid occurs or it increases in the blood when there's inadequate perfusion or inadequate oxygen supply to the tissues. So that's that was my understanding. I don't want you to quote me on that. Um, I did do a ton of research and all the websites were conflicting saying no it's not because of low oxygen perfusion. Um, so a little bit confusing but that was my understanding of it in the hospital. Uh, luckily my levels dropped very quickly. They were able to resolve that so that was great. So that is all the info that I have for you, but there are some really, really great websites that I'm going to put the links below for, um, as well as tell you right now. So the National Center for Biotechnology Information has a great uh, section on their website about it, a nice article that lists out the definition of sepsis. Um, so I am going to put that below. And the CDC also has great information. They have one pagers that you could print out, share with your friends if you feel feel like they need some knowledge on sepsis. Um, really great one page information sheets. So I got a lot of my information from both of these websites. Feel free to check them out, educate yourself, and yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to tell you in another video how I came home and started to kind of recover from the sepsis, get back into the swing of things. So I hope that you enjoyed this video, and um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!